In this video, we'll learn six Inkscape path effects by using them to create this adjustable jellyfish-like creature. To start creating the jellyfish's body, I'll go to the circle as an ellipsis tool and create an ellipse. I'll make the ellipse black for now, and I'm going to lower its opacity to 50% to make it easier to see everything. Alright, now I want to cut off the bottom half of the ellipse. To do this, I'll go to the squares and rectangles tool and create a rectangle that covers the ellipse's bottom half. Now I'll grab the select tool and select both objects, then go up to the path menu and choose difference. Okay, next I want to round off these corners. To do this, I'll use the corners path effect. But first, if I go to the node tool, I might have some extra nodes here above the corner nodes. These will get in the way when I try to round the corners, so I need to delete them. To do this, I'll select one of the extra nodes, hold shift and select the other one, and press delete. Alright, and in Inkscape 1.3, with the node tool active, we can easily apply the corners path effect to a selected object by clicking this button up here that says Add Corners LPE. We now get these white circular handles near the nodes, and we can use these to change the rounding of the corner at that node. We can also select multiple nodes and round them together. Now if I open up the Path Effects dialog by going to Path and choosing Path Effects, we can see in here that the path has a corners path effect attached to it. In the Path Effects dialog, we can adjust the rounding at all of the nodes using this radius setting. We can also change the corner type down here. Fillet is the default. Inverse fillet inverts the rounding. Chamfer chops off the corners. And we can use this chamfer step setting to change the look of it. And finally, inverse chamfer inverts the result. We can also cycle between the corner types at a particular node by holding down control and clicking one of its handles. I want to round all of the corners, so I'll go back to using fillet. Then I'll select these two bottom nodes again and round them some more. And I can go to the select tool and resize everything if I want. Alright, next I want to create the tentacles. I'll use the pen tool for this. Now as we'll see in a bit, it's important that we create the first tentacle path horizontally. So first I'll click somewhere down here, then while holding down control to keep the path horizontal, I'll click over here. And I'll press enter to finish the path. Alright, and I want to be able to adjust the width of this path at different points, particularly by making one end wider than the other end. For this I'll use the power stroke path effect. So with the path selected, I can come over here to the top of the path effects dialog, and I can either click the arrow here to show all of the path effects, or I can just start typing power stroke in the box here and click it when it pops up. Okay, so at the moment the path still looks the same, but if we start increasing the width multiplier setting here, we can thicken up the path. And we can see that by default, the path is tapered at both ends. Now if we go to the node tool, we have these three purple diamond handles, one near each of the nodes and one at the center. These are called stroke width control points, and we can move them along the path and use them to adjust the width of the path near that point. Back over in the path effects dialog, we have these start cap and end cap settings. These affect the shape of the path at both the start and the end points. Zero width gives us the tapered look, and we can also go with butt, peak, round, and square. I'm going to set start cap to round, and I'll leave end cap on zero width. Okay, next I want to be able to bend this path in various ways, so that it's not so rigid and actually looks like a tentacle. We'll use the bend path effect for this, and it's the reason we had to create this path horizontally. To demonstrate why, I'll create a rectangle down here, and I'm going to make it go horizontally across the canvas. And now I'm going to add the bend path effect to it. Alright, now under bend path here, if I click this button that says edit on canvas, it switches me to the node tool, and now I can see this green line going horizontally through the center of the rectangle. If I click and drag this line, I can bend the rectangle. I can also move around these nodes at each end of the line. And I can use the handles to further adjust the bending. 
Another thing I can do is double click the green line to add another node to it and split it into segments and I can adjust the bending of each segment. And finally I can use the width setting in the path effects dialog to adjust the width along the entire shape. Alright now the reason it's best to first create an object horizontally if we plan to add the bend path effect to it is that the bend path is always created horizontally along the center of the object. If I rotate the rectangle and show the bend path again, we can see that the bend path rotated along with it. However, if I instead create a vertical rectangle, add the bend path effect to it, and show the bend path, it spans the narrow part of the rectangle. This could be what we want, but in most cases probably not. There actually is a fix to this, which is to check the original path as vertical box in the path effects dialog, then adjust everything to try to get the original shape back. This works okay with simple shapes like rectangles, but not so much with complex ones, which is why I recommend just creating the shapes horizontally to begin with. Alright, with all of that out of the way, I'll delete these rectangles, and I'm going to add the bend path effect to the tentacle path. Now the path has both the power stroke and the bend path effects attached to it. I can now make the path vertical by clicking it to show its rotation handles, grabbing one of the corner handles, holding down control to snap the rotation angle, and rotating it clockwise until it's vertical. Now I can position it on the body, click it again to get back to the scale handles, and adjust the height a bit. I'm not actually going to bend this path yet, because this jellyfish is going to be my base jellyfish. I'm going to create duplicates of it and make various adjustments on the duplicates. Ok now I want to duplicate the tentacle path a few times. To do so I'll right click it and choose duplicate and move it to the right. Now I can duplicate and move this one, and I'll repeat the process for a total of 5 tentacles. Alright next I want to create various spots on the body. For this I'll go to the circles and ellipses tool, click and drag in here, and hold down control to create a perfect circle. I'll raise the opacity up to 100%, then I'll go to the select tool, duplicate the circle, move it somewhere else, and adjust the size while holding down control. I'll make about 7 or 8 of these. Ok next I'm going to place all the spots and all of the tentacles into a single group. To do this I'll select everything but the body object, then I'll right click and choose group. These are now treated as a single object. Alright and I want to copy this group into my clipboard by right clicking it and choosing copy. This is important for the clone original path effect which is coming up next. I'm now going to duplicate the group by right clicking it and choosing duplicate, and I'm going to use the path effects dialog to add clone original to the duplicate. What clone original does is it allows us to clone certain properties of an object or group of objects. To use it we first need to have whatever object or group that we want to clone copied into the clipboard. Then next to linked item here, we click the link to item button. This group is now a clone of the original group here under it, because we copied the original group into the clipboard. And if I select the original group, I now have this button in the path effects dialog that I can click to easily select the clone. Alright and by default, clone original will clone the original object's shape including its LPEs which are its path effects. We can also choose to not clone the object shape at all, to only clone its spiral or b-spline path effects if it has any, or to clone just the object shape without its path effects. In our case we want to leave it on with LPEs. We can also choose to clone certain attributes of the object, like its style or transform, or certain CSS properties, like the fill or opacity. What we want to do is clone the original object's transform, so that if we move or resize one of the objects in the original group, the results will also be applied to the same object in the clone group. An easy way to clone the original group's transform is to uncheck allow transforms here. This forces the clone group to always remain at the same position as the original group. If we try to move the clone group, as soon as we release the mouse, it moves back to the original group's position. Now a cool thing about the clone original path effect is that we can actually add more path effects to the clone group, separate from the original object's path effects. Let's go with offset here. With the offset path effect, if we go to the node tool, we get this orange circular handle somewhere on the object or group which we can use to offset it. And because we're not cloning the original group's opacity, 
We can lower the opacity of the clone group so that we can better see how much of an offset we're giving it. Now when we use offset on objects with sharp points, the ends might get cut off like this. This actually doesn't matter for us because we're going to be cutting out the offset in a bit, but just in case we want to change this, we can for example change the join setting here to rounded. Alright to finish up the jellyfish, we're going to cut the clone group out of the body object. Because the clone group is offset, this will have the effect of adding some spacing around all the spots and the tentacles. To do this, let's copy the clone group into the clipboard by right clicking it and choosing copy. Now let's go to the select tool and grab the body object. Then let's add the boolean operation path effect to it. Boolean operation allows us to perform path effects between two objects or groups non-destructively. We can view all of the possible operations that we can perform by clicking the operation setting option here. Now the reason we need to use the boolean operation path effect instead of just performing a normal path operation from the path menu is that these operations will flatten the path effects of the objects. This will cause us to not be able to adjust the object's path effect settings anymore. We want our jellyfish to be fully adjustable, which is why we need to use the boolean operation path effect. Alright, and in order to use boolean operation, we need to have an object or group copied into our clipboard. We should still have the clone group here copied into the clipboard, so now next to operand path here, we need to click the link to item button. The default operation of union combines the body object with the clone group. What we want to do instead is cut the clone group out of the body object. We can do this by changing the operation to difference. Alright now at the moment, if I click one of the spots or tentacles, it will select the clone group, as we can see in the path effects dialog. We want to be able to select the original group underneath it, so let's click the lower to bottom button up here. Now if we click in here, it will select the original group. Ok now to make some adjustments, let's first select all of the jellyfish parts, duplicate them, and bring them over here. Now let's deselect everything, then we can enter into the group here, either by right clicking it and choosing enter group, or by double clicking it. Now we can select the individual objects. If we transform one of these objects, such as by moving or resizing one of the spots, the objects in the clone group will adjust accordingly. And if we select one of the tentacles, we can click the edit on canvas button for its bend path effect, and bend it in various ways. And we can double click the bend path to add extra nodes. If we add a node to a bend path and it gives us a corner node indicated by a diamond, we can click the make selected node smooth button up here. Ok so in this lesson, we learned how to use the corners, power stroke, bend, clone original, offset and boolean operation path effects. Thank you very much for watching.